Hello everybody, welcome to the I Am IT YouTube channel. My name is Shabazz Dan as ever, I am the IT Geek. Welcome back to my Azure Stack series. Um, so again, uh, kind of had an introduction and did the first episode around Azure Stack HCI, or introduction to Azure Stack HCI. Um, and what, what's kind of brought this series along is, um, I was speaking to someone at a conference, we're talking about Azure Stack HCI with AVD, and they kind of mentioned to me that I could actually deploy Azure Stack HCI in a sandbox in my tenant. So you know what, I'm going to do that, but I'm going to do a series around it and talk about how I did it. So last episode we did the deployment, this episode we're going to look at the resources that we've provisioned and try and connect to them. Um, so I thought, you know what, I'll talk about Azure Stack, HCI, Edge, Hub, all that sort of stuff. Um, so that's what this is about. So a bit of a, bit of a whim really, I didn't really plan on doing it. Uh, but So this is this is the introduction to Azure Stack, HCI part two. So this this topic, intro to Azure Stack, HCI is a three part uh, topic. So this is the second video. Um, and then we're going to have another video after this. So in today's episode, we're going to talk about uh, what is Azure Stack HCI, what is Azure Stack Edge, and then we're going to do um, a demo where we're going to look at the resources that were provisioned in the last uh, video. First of all, what is Azure Stack HCI? So Azure Stack HCI allows you to deploy Windows, Linux-based, virtualized and containerized workloads on a hyper-converging infrastructure, a HCI cluster in your own data center or a data center that's managed by a service provider. From the hardware standpoint, similar to, to the hub, uh, each stack HCI cluster consists of between one to six physical, uh, validated servers running specialized operating systems purposely defined for hyper-converged infrastructures. So that the hub one wasn't for, for defined hyper-converged infrastructures, but there were one to six physical servers. Here's a sort of diagram that sort of, uh, we, you know, we want to show something similar to the hub. So we've got Azure Stack HCI solution, which is connected remotely to Azure services. Got the Windows uh, Admin Center UI. We then have the Windows Server VMs. Um, so, so the clustered servers share sort of common configuration resources by using Windows Server failover clustering features. Um, and so you've, some of those resources include the Hyper-V compute resources, the storage space direct ba direct based virtualization storage, and optional software defined networking or SDN based virtualized networking using the sort of network controller Windows Server role. Um, so just continuing with what you know, what is Azure Stack HCI? Unlike the Azure Stack Hub, which allows only a restricted set of administrative tasks with sort of well-defined constrained interfaces, Azure Stack HCI gives you full direct access to your underlying hardware and OS when you're on your cluster nodes. You can also manage Azure Stack HCI operations the same way as any other Windows Server-based cluster using such tools as Windows PowerShell, Windows Server Manager. Uh, also, to optimize your experience, it's recommended by Microsoft to use Windows Admin Center. Azure Stack HCI also offers disaster recovery or DR capabilities that build on its support for a stretched uh, clustering. By deploying a stretch uh, Azure Stack HCI cluster, you can synchronously replicate its workloads across two separate on-premises locations and not automatically fail over between them. Azure Stack HCI also runs platform as a service services on on-premises with Azure Arc. Finally, you know, as opposed to, you know, um, so on the other hand, Azure Stack HCI doesn't support, sorry, implementations of Azure-based deployment methodologies that rely on Azure Resource Manager. Uh, this is, but this is available on Azure Stack Hub. Um, and also Azure Stack HCI doesn't inherently enforce or provide multi-tenancy, which is just another thing to remember. So let's look at some of the common use cases of Azure Stack HCI. So for branch offices and wedge, uh, edge workloads, you can minimize infrastructure costs uh, by deploying two node clustering with inexpensive witness options such as your cloud witness or USB driven base file share witness. Also, factor the con this fact another factor that contributes, should I say, to lower costs of two node clustering is support for switches, switches, switchless networking, which relies on crossover cables between cluster nodes instead of more expensive sort of high speed switches. So the second one is sort of your VDI. So Azure Stack HCI clusters are well suited to large scale VDI deployments with RDS or equivalent third party offerings like AVD uh, as a virtual desktop broker. Azure Stack HCI provides more benefits by including centralized storage and enhanced security, which simplifies sort of protecting user data and minimizes the risk of accidentally or intentionally data leaks. We then got hyper, high, highly performance SQL Server. So Azure Stack HCI provides, uh, provides an extra layer um, of resiliency for high available, mission critical, always on availability uh, groups based deployments such as SQL servers. 
This approach also offers extra benefits uh, with a single sort of vendor approach, including simplified support and performance optimizations built into the underlying platform. Just like HCI also offers, we've got the trusted enterprise virtualization. So just like HCI satisfies the trusted enterprise virtualization requirements through its uh, built-in support for virtualized base security or VBS. VBS relies uh, on Hyper-V to implement the mechanisms referred to as virtual secure mode. And this is, uh, this is the sort of forms a dedicated isolated memory region uh, with its guest VMs. By using programming techniques, uh, it's possible to form designated security sensitive operations in this uh, dedicated memory region uh, while blocking access to it from the OS. And this configuration considerably limits uh, potential vulnerabilities to kernel based exploits as well. Then have your scale out storage. The storage direct is one of the core technologies of the Stack HCI. Its primary benefits include high availability, performance and scalability that uses locally attached drives. Uh, using storage direct results in significant cost reductions compared with compute offerings uh, based on storage area network or SAN or, or network attached storage, NAS technologies. And these benefits result from innovative design and a wide range of enhancements such as persistent read-write cache drives, mirror accelerated parity and nested resiliency as well as deduplication. We then got Azure Kubernetes or AKS as well. So this is another use case for Azure Stack ACI. So you can use Azure Stack ACI to host container-based deployments, uh, which increases workload density and resource usage efficiency. Azure Stack ACI also further enhances the agility and resiliency inherent to AKS deployments. Azure Stack HCI manages automatic failover of VMs serving as Kubernetes cluster nodes if there's a localized failure of underlying physical components. This configuration supplements the availability on its uh, built on Kubernetes, which automatically restarts for failed containers on the same or another VM. Finally, for, for the common use cases for Azure Stack HCI, we've got disaster recovery for virtualized workloads. So just like HCI stretch cluster provides automatic failover of virtualized workloads to a secondary site following site failure. Synchronous replication ensures crash consistency of virtual machine disks as well. So now let's talk about what is Azure Stack uh, Edge. So Azure Stack Edge allows you to perform uh, processing based ML or machine learning based infer inferencing of on-premises data and uploading it to Azure by using purpose-built Microsoft provided appliances residing on your on-premises location. Azure Stack Edge uh, supports generic virtualized and containerized workloads, but it's optimized for processing and analyzing data at the edge and transferring the results into the cloud. Azure Stack Edge focuses on processing, analyzing and transferring data rather than implementing you know, a wide range of virtualized and containerized workloads. To provide these specialized capabilities, Azure Stack Edge offers appliances that are graphic processing unit or GPU based, or field programmable gate array or FPGA based. Along with the vision processing unit, VPU, these appliances enable artificial intelligence inferencing and provide network storage uh, gateway functionality as well. Let's look at some of the Azure Stack Edge components now. So you've got an Azure Stack Edge physical appliance You've got an Azure Stack Edge resource accessible via Azure portal, and you've got the Azure Stack uh, Edge local web user interface. So these are some of the these are the the Edge component use cases here. Um, again, some of the descriptions there as well. So uh, the, the sort of uh, the Azure Stack Edge physical appliance. Um, this is our clients gives the clients a place in on-premises Edge location to function uh, as a network storage gateway, and this is accessible via local share as well. From an Azure Stack Edge resource accessible via Azure Portal com component perspective, this resource allows you to administer and monitor multiple Azure Stack Edge physical appliances, including the management of your local shares, hosting the data process and transfer to Azure Storage. Finally, that web user interface, and this is a UI uh, which provides direct connection to individual Stack, uh, individual Azure Stack Edge appliances. Uh, let's look at a diagram now to, to explain this whole, this whole sort of uh, layout. Um, so we've got the Azure Stack Edge, uh, but on the left-hand side, we have sort of the on-premises components, devices, so it says, this could be the IoT, uh, stuff like that, and your different ML um, devices, machine learning devices. We then have your, in the Azure Stack Edge, we have your Kubernetes and your local Edge components, they're still on-premises. 
Uh, we have hardware acceleration on your local storage as well. Then we have those on-premises systems and data that it integrates with as well and fully interface, interfaces with. But on the right hand side, we've got our Azure Cloud. So this is Azure IoT Hub, it includes Azure Stack Edge with cloud resources and our Azure Storage, so block, page, and files. But then also those integrated with your Azure services, we can interact with Azure Edge as well. Finally, let's look at some use cases before we move over to the demo. So we've got the use case of data processing. So you can use Azure Stack Edge to transform data to optimize subsequent transferring, streamlining subsequent analytics, or remove content deemed sensitive from a security or privacy standpoint. Then we've got inferencing with Azure Machine Learning models. So you can use Azure Stack Edge to run ML models before transferring data to the cloud. You might still want to consider performing sort of transferring full data to retain and optimize ML models using cloud resources though. Finally, we've got transferring on-premises data to uh, Azure. Uh, so you use Azure Stack Edge to facilitate continuous transferring of on-premises data to Azure storage for longer term retention or further processing analytics. Um, so it is now demo time. So now we're gonna go jump back into the demo portal. We're actually gonna look at some of those resources that we provisioned in the uh, last episode. So let's move over to the demo tenant. Welcome back to the uh, demo portal. So um, we've obviously done the deployment in the in the last episode, um, and I wanted to take a look at the the resources that we have created. Um, so if we go to resource group, we get HCI box RG. Here we can see a whole host of um, data disks that have been created. So if we click on one of the data disks. Let's have a look. So it's provision premium SSD uh, local um, LRS basically, uh, and then we've got sorry, it's, yeah, premium LRS local storage um, P15 disk tier, so you know premium disks, um, eleven hundred IOPS, hundred twenty. So quite quite good good disk to be fair. Um, so if we look, it's deployed. So this is this is the underlying hardware basically that's deployed. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So eight disks. We've got an automation account, we've got the Bastion, which I configured uh, and deployed as well as part of it. We've got a public IP address for the Bastion. Got my management VM, so we're going to try and log into this in a second. Uh, the NIC, the OS disk for that as well, the NSG for that. We've got the VNet, which will have two subnets, I think. Uh, and then we've got our different log analytics workspaces, along with the storage account um, and some more um, some sort of size type solution. I'm assuming that's a workspace of some sort. Uh, for Azure Arc, maybe. Um, so if we go to um, let's go to virtual machine. Let's go to our HCI box client. And I want to. I'm going to connect to this via the Bastion. Uh, so my username is SD Admin, and then that's my password, which I set. So what's going to happen is once we log in, it's going to run a script, and this script is essentially what registers all the HCI platform and deployment. Um, so this is the script that's running now. Now with this script, it can take about up to two hours. Um, not sure why that's that's done that, but anyway, that's it. It's not sure why it's run that. So anyway, it's registering the providers, um, and as I said, this script can take up to like two hours to run. Um, but once this script is done, um, the automatic basically closes automatically. And at that point, the infrastructure deployment is complete, and we can then look at verifying that the nodes and arc enabled servers are there so um yeah i mean look i'm not going to stay and watch this for two hours if you, no one wants to watch that however um what i will do is in the next video in the next demo we will look at verifying that the clusters are there and start doing some management tasks as well um so yeah just quickly want to show that uh some you know the, the initial deployment of it and, and you know logging into our management vm uh, so yeah, thank you everybody for watching. Please, please do continue to support my channel. Make sure you subscribe. If you're not, please do subscribe. Lots of good content coming. Hopefully you're enjoying this Stack HCI content. You know, I'm going to try and try, I like to try and keep it different on my YouTube. I've done obviously quite a few exam content, uh, sort of exam prep videos, you know, the book reviews and stuff like that. So try to keep it a bit different. I am going to try and get a secret or a special um, podcast with, like, with a special guest around the Stack HCI. So hopefully just keep a look out for that in this series. Um, we do have one more episode in this little um, introduction to Azure Stack HCI, so keep an eye out for that dropping next episode. So thank you very much for watching. Until next time, goodbye.